The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today I'm going to do something a little different. Do a performance and evaluation test on CTO-1 and see how she comes across on a full test. CTO-1 is a 1983 privateer with a length overall of 24 feet and a beam of 8 feet 6 inches. She had a 90 gallon fuel capacity, an empty weight of 5,000 pounds, so with full fuel, three people on board, and a pair of Mercury 150 Optimax doing the heavy work, we had a test weight of 6,065 pounds. Her top speed came in at 5,000 RPMs and 39.5 miles an hour, which gave us a 30.3 gallon per hour fuel burn and 1.3 miles per gallon. Dialed back to a more economical cruise of 3,500, we were running at 27.1 miles an hour, while burning 13.1 gallons per hour, which means 2.06 miles per gallon and 167 mile range. Her time to plane was 5 seconds and her 0 to 30 time was 7 seconds. Well, now that we're back at the dock, I want to take a look at some of the features of CTO-1 and see what's different on this boat than on your boat. Starting in the stern of the boat, obviously this is in a high-performance ski tow bridle. Two and a half inch pipe serves multiple purposes. It keeps the tow line from dropping into the water and following up the propellers or getting tangled up between the engines. Should the boat behind that's being towed start drifting forward, it'll keep it from hitting the engines. And these boats also do an awful lot of close quarters maneuvering, so now they can back right up to a bulkhead or pilings without damaging the engine or the boat. Take another look at the stern. You've got the transom and a secondary bulkhead just forward of it. This is a custom safety modification on this boat. You won't see it on the standard boat. And that's a safety feature, and let me tell you why. When you're towing a heavy tow, trying to pull somebody off a sandbar, the stern of the boat will squat down and water will just come pouring over the transom. You don't want that water coming into the cockpit, so this will stop that water from coming forward and it'll drain out the custom-made scuppers on either side. Remember the movie Jaws where the shark rips the cleats out of the back of the boat? Not going to happen here. These are oversized cleats with oversized backing plates. Here's something I found out. The tow line is custom-made. One of the features is it's easy to splice. It also is highly visible. It floats. And it's got a high braking strength, 18,000 pounds, and when it does break, it doesn't snap back, it just drops. When towing, it's all about safety. At the end of the tow line, it's custom made clip in a very clever way that they attach it to the boat being towed. Let me show you. They utilize this specially modified boat hook to accommodate this clip. See the grooves in the side of the clip? Feeds into the groove on the bracket here. Open it so that it also fits into the groove, just like that. So when you attach it to the tow ring, it clips itself closed and comes right off. Let's see it in action. Tow posts come in different shapes and sizes. On C Tow 1, it's a simple 6x6. Six its position is a very specific safety feature. Notice it's forward of the transom, right at the pivot point of the boat, so it allows the captain to maintain his maneuverability throughout the tow. Again, it's all about safety. Here, you have a safety screen. In the rare event that something does spring back, this will protect the captain. Plus, it gives you a great place to hang your lines. Take a look at the bow. What do you see that's different here than on your boat? Well, for starters, what I can see, no bow rail, no anchor davit, these are things that would be safety hazards on a boat like this. Now, it's important to remember, this is sea tow number one, the first tow boat they used. Let's take a look inside at some of the features. First, it's important to note that it is a pilot house. These guys go out in all kinds of inclement weather and they need to be protected. So that's why an enclosed pilot house is the only way to go. Notice that it's a working helm. You're not going to find foot rests, easy chairs. This is made for getting business done. Small desktop over on the port side where all the contracts and clipboards will stay. For electronics, radar, a radio direction finder, GPS, up overhead, dual VHF radios. This is a radio direction finder. You don't always know where the guy is that you're going out after. They may just give you a general idea. By having him transmit, you can actually get a magnetic heading towards that signal. Notice how there's all kinds of open room so the captain can get in and out. It's a safety feature. You have to be able to get access in and out of the pilot house. 
Now here's an antenna I bet you won't see on your boat. Remember that radio direction finder that we showed you earlier in the pilot house? This is the antenna for it. Multi-directional receiving. Notice the light arrays that we have here. Here's your towing light, which is part of the Coast Guard regulations for when you're towing a vessel. And this is a public safety strobe. Well, that's our look at the very first sea tow boat and what makes it different than your boat. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.